Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and today we're going to talk about planting in clay soils. Today I won't just be talking about clay-based soils, but any type of soil that doesn't drain very well between rains or stays wet between rains, and how to amend those when we're planting woody shrubs and you know flowering shrubs and trees and any sort of gardening we're doing to improve those soils and allow them to drain better. So let's go over the tools we might use in clay-based soils. First of all, I buy all fiberglass tools. I started my landscape company 20 years ago in uh, 1996 and some of the tools I purchased at that time that were fiberglass handle tools, I still have them today. This rake included, it's been out of shape but this garden rake and I have been together quite a bit over the years. This is definitely a tool you're gonna to wanna to have as a garden rake. And the main use for this when we're planting is actually gonna to be to pull existing mulch and pine straw out of the way. We're gonna use this to clear an area around where we're gonna be planting so that we don't mix any of the existing mulch or pine straw into the, the new planting hole. What might be the most important tool when we're planting in clay is actually a pickaxe. This one, this one again, I've had for a very, very long period of time and it's held up extremely well with this fiberglass handle. There are two ends to this pickaxe. One is the ax end. I see people trying to dig with this end. This is not the digging end. This is if you find a, a root or a rock or something that you need to remove from the hole. That's what we use this for. This one's extremely dull. I need to actually sharpen it. The other end is actually the digging end, the pick end. Um, we'll use this, we'll, and I'll show you, we'll slam this down into the ground and just pull back on it, kind of easy, and just break up the clay and then we'll use the shovel to do the rest of the work. Next up is the shovel, the thing we're going to remove the soil from the hole after we use the pickaxe to break it up. I'm not going to try in clay-based soils to use a full-size shovel like this to break up clay soils. It's just not, it's just very, very difficult. It's actually discouraging. Uh, I don't use these at all. We didn't when we landscaped. I quickly found out early on the area that I'm in, especially anywhere around Raleigh or central North Carolina, has a lot of clay. And you just can't stick this thing in the ground very readily, so we don't use it. What we actually use is a trenching shovel. The shovel is about maybe five, inch, five inches in width and maybe 12 inches long. And this one was probably about an inch longer when I purchased it. I've worn it out over the years, but this tool once we use the pickaxe to break the soil up a little bit, this tool will slide right into the clay and easily remove it. So when you're shopping for a shovel and you have clay in your yard and you're only going to buy one shovel because these fiberglass tools can be expensive, buy a trenching shovel and not a regular digging spade. Okay, so let's talk about what soil amendments we're going to use when we're planting in the clay. First of all, we'll want to avoid anything that says potting mix or potting soil or anything like that. These are not going to be good for woody shrubs or trees or fruiting plants or burying plants. Even if you were putting your shrub in a container, this is a container mix, but it's a container mix that's best for annuals, maybe flowering perennials, your summer flowering container plants or vegetable plants, but really not for any kind of woody shrubs or trees. So we'll avoid this and uh, move to the next thing. We're also going to want to avoid peat moss when we're planting in clay. That's one of the components that's in the potting soil. This has, can wick you know, 20 or 30 or maybe more times its own weight in water up. This is a decayed plant material that's decayed over generations into generations. And it's fantastic for holding water in place. Not a good idea in clay soils because you're digging a little clay pot. If you put something in it that will wick up water, all the water is going to run into your newly dug clay pot. And then it's, this material is going to soak it up and keep it in place and end up drowning your plants. So just not a good idea in clay soils. The next thing I've got here is a bag of cow manure. Similar, similar results to peat moss and potting soil. This is going to hold too much water in place, I believe for planting in clay. It's a very, very heavy material and it does tend to stay wet between rains and between waterings. You know, this bag right here weighs, you know, it's the same size bag as some of these other ones and it weighs double. It's just, it, uh, it has an amazing capacity of holding water, which is great in some planting situations, but not very good in planting in the clay. The next thing we have is compost and this product happens to be a chunkier compost. You can kind of feel on the outside of the bag and see if it's got any 
uh, material left in it that hasn't been fully composted down to soil. If it does, this actually works great in the clay. My only concern with compost typically is we don't know what the pH is on compost when we buy it. It's not going to matter if you're putting two or three shovelfuls in a hole for a tree or a shrub. It's not going to affect the pH that much. But if you were continually using this product for something like vegetable gardening or something like that, you would want to check the pH and make sure that it's not going to raise or lower your pH too much over time. But this would be a good product to use in clay. I'd like something even a little more chunky if it's a very heavy clay. And for that, we'll use soil conditioner, something that should be labeled soil conditioner or pine bark soil conditioner. Uh, those are ideal materials. And I'll open this up. This is literally finds from a, uh, a pine tree that have been composted a little bit, probably aged about a year, and then were ground up to a smaller size. And this is the ideal material for mixing into clay. And we'll mix this 50% with the clay that we pull out of the soil, and we'll mix it 50% with, uh, with the pine bark. We may actually add some compost to that just to show you. I might do a third, third, third for the plant that I'm gonna put into the ground in the clay soils. So all that's left to decide at that point, you know the tools you're going to use and you know the amendments you're going to use to plant them. Now you need to know what kind of mulch you're going to use after you plant your plant. You need to cover the ground with something around your plant to prevent weeds from coming up and competing with your shrubs or your trees. And also it regulates the water, the soil moisture. The two main things we may use for mulch are going to be pine straw, if baled pine straw is available in your area. This makes a fantastic mulch, it breathes really well, it blocks weeds from coming up, fantastic. It typically doesn't choke your plants out, it won't drown your plants as readily. So I like it, I like to use it. Um, it has been banned in some areas because it could be a fire hazard. Uh, you know, if you're concerned about that, or if you live in an area that gets, you know, is prone to a lot of fall and winter fires, you know, might not be the best idea. The other thing that people are gonna use is a hardwood mulch of some kind. This is a bag of brown dyed hardwood mulch. You see more and more of this, either black or brown or red dyed hardwood mulch. You know, they dye it to keep the color longer. It's supposed to be some sort of organic dye. Um, I hope it's not damaging to the environment. I have no idea. Typically, I would just use regular uh, triple shred or double shred hardwood mulch and buy it in bulk and just make sure you're using a thin enough layer that we're not drowning our plants. Another option people use is gravels or rocks. You'll typically see used as mulch. You'll see it more in drier climates, typically in areas in the east where it rains more. Uh, it looks great when you first put it down, but as leaves blow into it and weeds start to come up in it, it's very difficult to clean. It seems very permanent at first, and then in the long run, it ends up being a lot of maintenance. So I prefer just to use hardwood mulch or pine straw as my mulch. One other thing you may see when you're shopping for soil amendments is that a lot of them now have fertilizer in them. And that makes sense for a potting soil where you might be planting a house plant or planting your flowers, annuals, vegetables, those, that kind of thing. Those things you would definitely want to fertilize at the time you were planting them. Doesn't make a lot of sense to have a planting soil for shrubs or trees have fertilizer in it because I might be planting my azalea in the fall, but it has fertilizer in the bag that I wouldn't want to put on until March. So when we're shopping for amendments for trees and shrubs and fruit plants and berry plants and any kind of woody plants, even perennials, I would buy the really simple planting components that I showed you and then buy your fertilizer separately if it's the appropriate time. So I'm gonna be planting this pink snow camellia in this area right here. And I know all the way around the foundation of this house is very heavy clay. So I've got my soil amendments here. I have the appropriate tools and I have my plant. The first thing I wanna do is clear this pine straw. There's some leaves that have fallen on it. It's in the fall. And I have a layer of pine straw under here. We're gonna to wanna to clear it out with the garden rake, a big area. You can see how easy this rake makes clearing the soil. And I'm gonna push back there, right there. So now I'm down to just the soil all the way around in a circle there. Okay. All right. This is our trenching shovel here. I'm gonna see 
I'll show you how hard this actually is. I've got a tree here to my right and another tree over here. So I'm expecting to run into some roots. I can actually see a surface root right there. This is the spot I'm gonna be digging in. But you can see, you know, I can force this trenching shovel down in the ground a little bit at the time like that and pull back on it. I can make progress. If I was trying to use a regular, you know, 10 or 12 inch spade, there's no way I could push it down into this. This is very heavy red clay under this uh, little bit of black soil on the top where my mulch has broken down over the years. But you can see right here, that's that heavy, thick red clay. It's actually great soil for growing shrubs, especially so shrubs in my area that are acid loving shrubs, but it doesn't drain very well. And when we dig that hole, we're actually digging a space where all the water is gonna easily collect now. And that's the purpose for using chunky material is to drain that water to the bottom of that hole. Okay, rather than use that shovel, I'm gonna show you, here's the pick end of the pickaxe here. I'm basically just gonna raise this thing and pretty much let it drop in on its own. And when it goes down in, I'm just gonna pull back on it like that. And I'll go in a circle, maybe twice the width of that pot and just let it fall down and then pull back on it. It's not a lot of effort on my part. I'm not driving it down. I'm basically just using the weight of the tool and then pulling back. And there are some roots in this hole that will eventually have to be cut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the ax into this and just kind of go around the edge of this hole that I'm digging, knowing that I'm eventually gonna have to cut all these small roots. Okay, all right, so once we've gotten that much done, I'll come back to my uh, trenching shovel and just clean out the hole. We'll set it on the side. I cleared out a big enough space that I can make maybe two piles of soil. These larger pieces that are coming out, I'm gonna go ahead and cut those up a little bit. It'll make it easier later. Got some trash here. If you're digging around a foundation, you're almost always gonna find this sort of construction trash where things just dropped and they stayed where they stayed when the guys were building the house. Any of these roots that I chopped up, we don't want those to end up back in the hole, so we'll dispose of those. Don't think I'm gonna to have to use the pick again. Once I got through those roots, it's not too bad. There's a maybe a four inch layer of red clay and then right under that was a slightly different soil that seems a little easier to, to break through. I almost got it. Not much more. Okay, I'm gonna kind of test fit this con container while the plant's still in the container. See if I've gone deep enough. We'll just use it. Just leave it in the container and set it there. And we're probably still an inch to go to get the top of that root ball level with the old soil line. So, that shouldn't be too bad. See how much easier this trenching shovel is. There's no way I could pull this out this easily. 
now I'm down to some other layer of a different clay. This just happens around new construction where they move soil back and forth and you end up with weird layers. But that's what soil amendments are for. Okay, we're down plenty deep enough now. I'll bring the uh, camera over and show you the hole. So that's it right there. We're down deep enough that the top of the root ball on the plant is even with the old soil line. And we're probably about one and a half times the width of the container, that's totally adequate. We've got some roots and some other debris around the edge of this hole. I'm gonna just kind of throw those to the side. I'll throw them in my mulch. They'll break down pretty easily. They're small ones. And uh, then we'll move to the next step. Okay, so we've got our hole dug. Most of the other organic material has been removed, the little roots and that kind of thing. What we're gonna do now is I have this ring of soil around the hole here. I'm gonna use some of this pine bark soil conditioner and just kind of go around the edge with that. A little bit goes in the hole, doesn't matter. It's gonna end up there anyway. Okay, so we've got that. I've basically put a you know, quarter inch or half inch layer on there. I am gonna use some of this compost right here. This is a little more messy. It's a big, heavy, thick, wet material here. But it has a little bit of chunky material in it. It should work great to drain this, help drain this soil. I'm just gonna add some of that. It'll also have a small amount of a fertilizer component, but not very much. That really should be adequate right there, those two things together. And really, they'll get mixed in as we plant. I'm not even going to do much uh, mixing it in. It'll just naturally happen as we start throwing soil back into this hole. So we knew the depth of the hole was about even with the top of our root ball. I'm actually gonna put some soil back into this hole, just a little bit, inch, inch and a half, so that this ends up up a little bit when we put it in the hole. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this Soil mix, if there's any more roots or anything you see that are gonna end up falling in the hole, grab them. But let me see, maybe a little more right there. Okay, so now we have a little bit of our soil mix. If there's any chunky clay left, just break it up a little bit if you can. Okay, and then we're gonna take our plant and usually, you know, we can hit two or three times on the side and that's usually adequate to get these pots to slide off. One other thing, this is a very heavy woody stem that I'm grabbing this by. I'm comfortable doing that on this plant, but frequently you'll get something that's, you know, very, very thin at the base and I would not be handling it this way at all. I would have probably, you know, laid it down, maybe turned it upside down and grabbed the soil like this and then taken my container off overhead like that. And that way I would not have manhandled the top of the plant like I'm doing with this camellia. But with this camellia, that's what we're gonna do. There's a tag on it, and it would be tempting to leave this tag on because you wanna identify the plant, but really you're best to take these off because over time that stem's gonna grow and that plastic's gonna end up buried in that stem. So get rid of any of those you see. So I'm gonna slide this out of the container. Normally on camellias, they're not very root bound, but this one actually has some matted roots along the side. So I'm gonna lay it here and I'm actually gonna take my shovel and I'm gonna just cut into it about a half an inch there. And I'm gonna to come to this side and do it there. And maybe one more time here, just like that. And that should get these going outward in the future. I'm gonna set this in the hole and see. I'd actually like this thing up just a little bit more. I think it was a little low in that container. so. I'm gonna set it to the side. Some plants you won't be able to do that with. This one's held together pretty well, but some of you might have to put back in the container temporarily to make an adjustment. Okay, all right. So here we go. Ah. I'm gonna set this into the hole. And now it is in fact sitting up an inch, inch and a half from where we started. I'm just gonna start 
taking the soil that I have around the edge of it and just slowly knocking it in. That's why I don't put one, if it's a bed like this, I'd like to put the soil all the way around like I did, because then I can just walk a circle around it. If I'd piled it all on one side, the tendency would be to kick it in on that one side and then move it, move it, move it. It'd just be more work with this technique. I can just come around, I can walk a circle around this plant and I'm mixing the compost and the pine bark at the exact same time. Again, if there's any clumps of clay, we're gonna to continue to break those up. And any additional roots, we're gonna get those out of there. This is a big 40 foot cryptomeria next to this thing. It has a very fibrous root system that probably will compete with this camellia over time. Camellias are very drought tolerant, but we're gonna to have to keep an eye on this plant when it becomes dry because this tree is gonna be pretty good. At this point, I'm gonna take my foot here and just keep rotating this around in a circle, pulling out any more organic material I see as I go and just keep walking like this. I don't wanna bury the top of this plant in any way. Now I'm gonna tamp with my foot just around the outside of that soil ball, just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna come back and clean off the top here so that nothing that wasn't covered when I took it out of the container is covered. It stays uncovered the whole process. A little more soil on this side. Okay, and that's pretty much done with the planting part of this. I'm gonna tamp it down one more time. Just like that. Beautiful. Okay, so our next step would be mulching. Uh, typically, I already had this pine straw in this space, which normally I pulled it back, planted the plant, pulled that existing pine straw back, maybe bought one extra bale, because you know it, gets, it never goes back exactly like it was. But in this case, I'm gonna show you, um, if I was gonna use, if it was a new space or I was re-mulching at the same time, I'm gonna show you on this hardwood mulch. This is a, uh, a brown dyed hardwood mulch. Um, I'm gonna pour about half this bag out right here and show you with this hardwood mulch, what we don't wanna do is that that little piling it up on the stem like that and that's <laughs> we frequently see everyone doing now i think people see it in commercial settings though the landscapers are wrong on this they're just flat out wrong we want to uh come after we mulch we want to come toward this middle of this plant and just pull it away from the stem so that i just put that back exactly like the top of it was in the container Okay, my mulch is fading out. I may have this much mulch, you know, two feet away from it, and that'll be fine. The plant will root out into that mulch layer and won't have a problem with it, but it can't start with three new inches of mulch sitting on top of the roots or they will end up rotting. And that would pretty much be that. Obviously, I'd mulch the entire space. Same thing with the pine straw. If I was opening that bale of pine straw, exact same thing. I would have piled it all around it, and then I would have come back and slid it back away from the base of the plant. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna take my uh, rake, and usually I can use the back of the steel tine rake, where it's just that flat metal bar right there. And basically this was kind of just flipped over like that. And I can usually just roll it back out for the most part and get it pretty much like it was to start with. Like that, maybe the other side a little bit just like that all the way around just keep knocking on it just like that and the exact same thing here after i've done this i'm going to go back i'm going to check and make sure that i just didn't pile a bunch of stuff up around the base of it boom beautiful that's it we got this bad boy in the ground okay so here's what i do on watering Usually I'd be planting more than one plant probably. And I, when I move to the next one, I just drag the water hose over to the base of the one I just planted. And I just let it run very slowly for a long time. And I saturate the entire space all the way around the plant. It's a good idea if the space is sloped 
to put it up at the top of the slope and that way it will cover most of the area. But this camellia will be blooming for years and years to come in this space. It ends up about eight or nine feet tall. So um, there's plenty of space here where I've planted it to allow it to do that. And it's in part shade where it would like to be. So that's the very basics of planting shrubs or trees or perennials in clay-based soils. Thank you for watching my video, and if it was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. And if you think the video would help someone else, please share it. Thank you for watching.